<laughs> okay, I can I see what you did there. Bitcoin's going to the moon in three months. Uh, false. <laughs> I'm gonna start by playing a little game, all right? True and false, you know the rules. Okay, if it's false, justify as to why it's false, okay? okay. Number one, Bitcoin's going to the moon. True. <laughs> okay, I, can, I see what you did there. Bitcoin's going to the moon in three months. Uh, false. <laughs> false. Yeah, so as you know, David, I, I, I really love cryptocurrencies, I love Bitcoin, yeah. um, but it just, it takes time, you know, it's, it's like a, a child, right? So Bitcoin, you could argue that was a toddler, then, yeah. then it's an adolescent, then it has to grow into an adult. And, and so eventually, yes, I see it being the future, but um, I'm probably one of the only people here that thinks price is going lower uh, before right. it goes higher. Bitcoin has very closely followed the NASDAQ, but just uh, on a more leveraged level. So do you change the bands that you look at? Do you change the, uh, you know, the moving averages? that you use applied, I mean, the principles of technical analysis are still the same, but the uh, specific indicators, do you change them for an asset with a different volatility profile? You know, so I don't change them. I still use like the 200 is what Bitcoin just hit recently and it pulled back beautifully off of it. That was around 48,250 right. and it pulled back and I do use the 200 on stocks, but there's a difference, right? So you have to understand that cryptocurrencies have a much bigger volatility factor than most stocks. Like even though market cap wise, you could say, okay, well, um, Bitcoin is an Apple or a Microsoft or obviously a little bit smaller in market cap, but you don't see flushes overnight Right. In, in Microsoft that dropped 20%. And you can right. see that in Bitcoin. So as a trader, I have to be fully aware of that and, and play it differently, slightly differently. 50% of my Bitcoin position, I swing trade. Okay. So like you, I don't maybe it's trade as often, but whenever it goes down to a low, basically whenever you give me a floor, like, you know, that's 30,000 or, you know, 32,000, I'll buy that. And I'll just hold it until it goes up maybe 10, 50%. And I'll just yeah. sell it off and then I'll repeat the process. So it's volatile enough for me to just buy relatively low and sell a little bit higher. I don't wait for it to go up 50%, I just wait for it to go up 15% or so. Yeah. Now the other half, I literally don't touch. You hodl. Yeah, I hodl, I bought it some time ago and I just don't touch it. Okay, um, so so what I would do is if, if you have that in cash and you're willing to swing trade it, yeah. start looking at 40,000 as a floor, um, if it breaks 40,000, you have some downside, but for the most part, I would expect support at 40,000 and it bounce back to about 44 to 45,000. So I think you can look for that. Now, um, just be ready. Remember, as a swing trader, you can't kind of just say, well, if it doesn't happen, I'm just gonna ignore. You have to right. be ready to act. So well, so that would be my level. From 40,000, let's say if I have 40,000, I'm waiting for 44,000, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, now. What if I tell you, Garrett, ten percent is not enough for me. I want, I want a little more. Do I wait after forty-four? Like, how does this work? Well, so it's I'm, going, it's going to twenty thousand. I'm being greedy or, here because I'm trading crypto. Well, and you can't be greedy in this scenario. And I'll tell okay. you why is because ultimately the bear flag is in in the chart. All right, you have a major cycle top here. You have all the makings of downside price action. The <coughs> fact that we even fell off the two hundred moving average and stayed within the channel that we talked about before tells you that everything on the bearish case for the midterm is is intact. So again, if you're willing to be in and be out for ten percent, then then be ready to deal with that. If not. I would say on the sit on the sidelines, you'll get a much, much better entry when you break down and go 20 or sub 20,000. So what's your price target now? You know I was gonna ask you that. Yeah. 40,000 is a downside, 44 is the upside. That's um, near term, that's just that's a near very term. near term bounces. Mere, um, medium term then. Medium term is is 20 or sub 20,000 still. Okay, still. And I've been consistent, that. I think in Dubai is when I first unveiled that price target to you. Uh -huh. um, and I stick with it because the charts haven't changed. Now, I do wanna be clear, the charts can change, right? Yeah. I have to be someone who, who can admit Admit when things change. So right. far, they haven't. But I will absolutely come back on with you and be like, "All right, they've changed." Ethereum. Uh, what's your long-term vision for Ethereum? Is it going to surpass Bitcoin in market cap? Is the flipping going to happen? You think? Mm. So, so my biggest concern with Ethereum is that it could be could be jostled out of the top lead by another cryptocurrency. I think Bitcoin remains the biggest and it will be for some time because it's becoming the, the, the digital gold, right? Yeah. So you're seeing you know, the likes of Michael Saylor, you're seeing the likes of so many big players getting in and basically saying this, while Ethereum has a huge amount of use case, what's to what's to make Solana not take over? What's to make you know a Avalanche? Or there, is there one that we don't even know of yet that could take over? And, and that means that when I'm investing in it, I'm gonna do slightly less money in Ethereum when I go long because of that risk. What, what's gonna hit, get hit the most, do you think? So I think housing is, is already starting to, to reverse and go down. Now, the positive for housing is that there's not a lot of supply out there, but at this point, I think I just read that since December, a $400,000 mortgage now is $400 
dollars more a month Jeez. than just what we what it was in December. So I mean, that's just based on what interest rates have done since then, uh, yeah. with the ten, with the thirty year going into the mid fives, close to six percent. So so again, you know. Real estate's going lower, um, stocks are going to go lower, uh, and crypto's going to go lower. Allocation is something you and I haven't talked about a lot. Um, in fact, I don't remember the last time I asked you this. So, 100% breakdown, what are you, what are you uh, allocated in? How would you allocate oh, your 100% breakdown? So, so if 100% portfolio, I have probably about, I would say about 40% short right now. Okay. All right, I have about 20% long. And the longs are spattered amongst you know various plays that I think have quality to them. They're more defensive names at this point. And then I also have a fair amount of cash sitting on the sidelines. So so again, I, um, that's really how I'm how I'm in right now. Now I do have a couple shorts on crypto. They're small, but I do have a short on Ethereum and Bitcoin that are in the money right now. Up to five thousand. Right. Think about the factors that are driving Bitcoin up to five hundred thousand. Break it down for the audience, and let's role play which scenario is likely to happen first. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with gold hitting five thousand first because I still think there's spec money in Bitcoin and it has to get more adoption. I think that you still have a lot of big money out there that is not comfortable owning Bitcoin yet. Now over the next few years, I do think that starts to shift and it's already starting to shift. And eventually, Bitcoin. I mean, think about the X times, right? I mean, you go to five thousand on on gold. It's only a little over, you know, what is it, one point five, one hundred and fifty percent from here. Yeah. Bitcoin five hundred thousand is a lot more than one hundred and fifty percent. Yes. So I do think. You will see eventually Bitcoin way outperform gold, but in the near term, I do think gold is the place to be. In fact, I remember our December December interview where you, where I said to you, gold would be the best performer in 2022 over Bitcoin as well as the stock market. I think so far I'm correct as of now. 